So today I wanted to do a little introduction to uh, raw edge quilting, uh, which I call raw edge random applique or some variation on that. When I got started, I had gotten a sewing machine and I hadn't sewn in many years. I'd sewn a little, but I had sort of a bad machine uh, that didn't work very well and I didn't enjoy sewing and mostly I made curtains out of sheets and that sort of thing. I didn't do any garments through college and uh, those early employment years. And I got this new machine and I saw this book and I had loved um, collage as a kid and this is called The Art of Fabric Collage. It's by Rosemary Icorn and it's an easy introduction to creative sewing and this is a great book and I picked it up because uh, I love the idea of it and it's so pretty on the cover and I read it cover to cover at the time I haven't really looked at it since then I think it came out about 13 years ago she made these uh, incredible mostly vests and some jackets if, if I'm remembering correctly and she talks about a lot of different things to do these fabric collages and with the fabric collage that she does, um, she would find design elements on a piece of fabric and then stitch around it and she did it on the insides of the vest as well as on the outside and she would stitch around the shape and then trim it off and then wash it so it got ratty and trim that off and get it cleaned up and add some embellishments and she made these beautiful pieces. And I was fascinated with what she was doing because I was so appalled at some of the raw edge work I was seeing in quilting and garments. I bought something with raw edges and uh, washed it, you know, as per the instructions and there was a part of it that just pulled apart and it just wasn't wearable. I might have been able to figure out a way to mend it, but I, I didn't do that. I liked the idea of a stable raw edge and I liked this sort of uh, textural effect that you get once you wash and dry quilting. So I liked a lot of what she was doing, but I didn't want to be searching for the right flowers to uh, highlight my design or whatever. I wanted to be able to make my own shapes and then use the same sort of process. And I encourage you to pick this book up, The Art of Fabric Collage. And, and read it if you're interested in what she's doing. If you're someone that likes to doodle and draw, then I encourage you to experiment with the techniques that I've pursued after reading her book and sort of leaving that with my hair on fire, as my friends say. Okay, so I want to present the raw edge quilting where we start a project and actually do it if we want to and end up with something that we can use. And so for some people, I uh, imagine they might want to do a tea cozy. And so there will be an option for a tea cozy, and which is a nice little item to be able to make for people. It's a really nice little gift item. Another option that I want to do is one where you do a little trivet. has three layers of insel bright batting, and that's pretty thick. To work with and for a beginner I'm not sure that that's going to be that helpful because you might be struggling with the slipperiness of the insel bright and the thickness of all the layers and so we're also going to do a version that's a little table mat a little smaller than the one that we did before although you could certainly do a 16 by 16 and also uh, probably the one I do will be round and I'll probably end up making several pieces and I'll show you uh, how I like to plan them you know with one or more of them and I'll be moving from piece to piece in the videos but I'll try to make sure that the information I'm presenting is clear and understandable for you to pursue your own project because I don't want to start people out with something that's so overwhelming that they won't be able to do it. I'm really wanting to do the best I can to keep everyone engaged with some part of this 
so that people can build the skills the confidence that they will need in order to take this on at the level that they want to take it on. This seems like a good time to talk about creativity in general and why I sew and why I quilt and why I wanted to become an art quilter in the first place. I don't know about the rest of you, but I find modern life to be a mixed bag. There are so many wonderful things that we have, technology, the ability to travel, just so many wonderful things. And there are difficult things about parenting and it can be hard to find a, a niche in life where you're comfortable and you enjoy things. And so of course it's great to have a hobby. And it's nice if you can make money from your hobby. It's nice if you can take something that you care about and love doing and turn it into a source of income for your family. I think personally that creating things by following other people's expectations and rules for me personally is a mistake. I only enjoy creating things when I'm trying first to please myself. I will admit that I hope other people like my artwork. I hope other people find the items that I make useful. I know there are thousands of cooks out in the world using my pot holders, some of them in other countries even, and not a lot, but I know I have loyal customers who have been sending gifts overseas for years. And I like the idea that people are getting enjoyment out of using things I've made. I like the idea that people tell me that the tree wall hanging of mine that they bought for their dining room it lights up the room. That I have an ego like anyone else. I enjoy that. But I'm just saying that with each of these things, as we decide what to create, the ultimate judge of whether or not it's good, whether or not it's useful, should be our own inner sense of what we believe to be true. And that's what I want you to do. I don't want you to make it the way you think I would like it. I want you to make it the way that you will like it. And if I like it too, great. If your husband, your wife, your friends, whoever, your children like the things you make, that's awesome as well. But please use this type of creativity as a place to please yourself first and to listen to yourself. And when you make a mistake, we're going to turn those into opportunities to go in directions we never imagined. Some of the coolest elements that I add to my own work, I will admit it, they started because I made a mistake and I needed to not cover it up. I needed to turn it into something positive so that the piece wasn't ruined because we don't want to take a bunch of, let's face it, expensive materials that go into sewing and make something we feel ashamed of or that is ruined and then end up throwing it away or sticking it in the back of a cupboard for our children to throw away someday. We're going to take those mistakes and turn them into an opportunity to do something that in our wildest dreams we never would have done. And if talk like this as in regards to quilting doesn't appeal to you, I encourage you to go do the kind of quilting that you love. There's so much beautiful work going on and there's so many people sharing their talents and teaching lots and lots of other things with quilting. And so, Thanks.